Hey, welcome over to Casey's Corner. Today's episode is about a new app that I wish existed sooner. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm going to be chatting with Sarah Neal, who is the creator and founder of Ms. Tyler. Let me show you this app, okay? So it's an app on your phone that is, the tagline is inspiration that fits. And what you do is you put in your stats, so your size, your height, your cup size, all that info, and basically what it does, it will match you with other users that have similar size as you, so you can get fashion inspiration. Now, the thing is, is not only do I use this for myself where I will share fun outfits, you can see some of my stuff on here as a contributor, but also I started using this almost like Remember Cher's closet from Clueless? <laughs> when you wanted to see everything that's in your closet, I start putting all the different outfits that I've ever taken pictures of, I put it in here, and when I'm going through and I'm like, oh, I have nothing to wear, guess what? I do because I have proof that it looked good right here. Well, anyway, I'm gonna be chatting with Sarah in just a second. She is so kind, so, so supportive and warm, and it's no wonder that she's created such a beautiful community. So let's talk with Sarah now. Sarah, I am so excited that we get to chat chat and talk um, and kind of just introduce to the masses this amazing app that you've developed called Miss Tyler. Go ahead and tell us about it. Okay. Well, yes, like I'm so happy to be chatting to you about it. And I was so happy that you reached out and you, you'd found Miss Tyler. Um, but it's, it's an idea I'd had, honestly, you know, back in 2014 is when I like registered the domain and I had this whole okay. idea and I'd actually put together like a a product brief, like a development brief to start like speaking to developers to find out how much it would cost to build. But the whole idea was like, I personally don't think of myself as being fashionable. Like I don't enjoy like reading magazines or shopping. I honestly, I'm the person who just wants somebody to tell me what to wear. And, you know, I worked most of my career in telecommunications and, you know, you don't learn that much about fashion in telecommunications. You know, my colleagues weren't super fashionable either. Um, but I was living in New York and everybody there just like, you know, everyone can have so much fun with fashion there. Like you can literally wear completely different things every day. Like there isn't sort of like a standard. Um, so it was a time that I really wanted to do more, but I was still wearing like jeans and a t-shirt every day. And I had all these friends that were super fashionable and like everything that they just threw on just like looked so perfect on them. So I said, okay, I want to get more fashionable, take me shopping, like dress me. Yeah. And what I realized was they were so good at dressing themselves. They'd perfected the art of dressing for somebody who was blonde and five foot four and had a C cup and okay. they had no idea what was actually going to suit me. And so the things that they were putting on me just like didn't work. And so that's when I realized I was like, why can't I just find somebody who is the same height, the same size that is already learning and doing the job of dressing for me. And I can copy them because they like shopping and I don't. And that was kind of the idea. And really, like, if you think about the world of like fashion and how we buy clothing, it used to be we'd go into a store and we would try things on. And then, you know, e-commerce came along and that was like really convenient because you could just like get access to everything. It wasn't as good for fit because you couldn't try it on, but it was right. super convenient. And then you had social shopping, which is, you know, like looking at like influencers and celebrities mm -hmm. and seeing what they were wearing. And that's great because it's fantastic for style because even if you, you have to decide which items to pick up, which items do you want to try and also how to style them, like what top goes with what bottoms and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, in what context do they make sense? So social was really powerful. So at the time I was like, why can't I just go onto Instagram and find somebody like me? Totally. <laughs> and yeah. And the, the name Miss Tyler is actually my, it's the letters, my styler. And so Can I tell you, the, it took me way too long to figure that out. <laughs> but actually that's, that's kind of by design because like, it's kind of in there, but I never want to, it to be too obvious because as soon as it's obvious, people just start calling it my styler and that's not right. a cool name, <laughs> right? you know, whereas Miss Tyler, you know, and again, like, you know, there's, there's like lots that go into it, but like even the idea of MYS, you know, it's not married, it's not single, it's, it could be any woman. It's kind of mysterious. Like it really is designed to be like mm -hmm. any woman or every woman. I like that. Oh, that's so, that's such an interesting way to think about it. Yeah. I really like that. So this, you have this amazing app. I love using it. And for those of you who are watching or listening, I found the app. I started using it because I have been sharing more and more kind of mid-size fashion content because 
for this exact reason, I yeah. wanted to have better style. I wanted to style myself differently and get out of, you know, we're pulling ourselves out of 2020 and yeah. we're living outside of yoga pants for, <laughs> for once. And I was just like, what kind of things will look good on my body? And when I found this, I was like, this is a no brainer. And I almost compare the app to that uh, that iconic scene in Clueless, right? Where like everyone wants the share closet to have something that you can look at and be like, what would look good on me? Yeah. And having this is exactly that. And I'm curious kind of what feedback have you received from the app so far since the launch? Yeah. So when, because like, I mean, to, to have this product, I basically needed to have lots of women of lots of different heights, sizes, shapes, colors, ages, because I wanted, you know, from day one, everybody to have the experience. They came on and they could find people like them. So from day one, I needed to have diversity. And so to build that, you know, is tough. And it's, it's called instead of like startups, like this chicken and the egg problem. Like, do you start with the chicken? Do you start with the egg? Like, how do you start? And so what we did is I, I found um, out that you could Google pretty much any celebrity and get their measurements and their height and their coloring and their age. So I started with 400 celebrities. And I tried to be as diverse as I could, you know, and then you, you could log on and you could um, basically, you know, put in your body details. And then we would use this fit algorithm to say, these are your body doubles. So now, like, if you happen to look at this celebrity in the magazines, you know that what looks good on her looks good on you. So that's how we sort of started. That's helpful um, in general. That's, a, that's like a different <laughs> app help. I know, own. I know. Very cool. But it was kind of like always just like, it was never the idea. It was kind of like just the yeah. way that we got started. Yeah. And um, so then... Uh, so that was like August, 2020, we launched that app. Then by, we started recruiting on the back end and we were like, Hey, if you'd like to be a creator on this app, like send it, like post four pictures of outfits and that's your application essentially. And we just wanted to make sure that it's, you know, actually clothing, you know? <laughs> um, and then by February, we had 180 creators. So we launched creators onto the platform. So you'd see like your matches and it'd be like celebrity creator, celebrity creator. Mm -hmm. And the feedback initially was like immediately was, you know, I have to, you know, quickly scroll through the celebrities to find the real women. Cause I'm like loving seeing like what people actually wear. Like, and it's not just like, you know, you know, like um, custom design or like black, black tie. Right, it's just right. like, what do I wear? Like, you know, to work, what do I wear to the supermarket? Mm -hmm. What do I wear to brunch? Like, you know, like, what do I wear, wear in my real world? And like real women, you know, and it feels like very accessible. So shortly after we removed celebrities altogether, um, one of the first emails I got was from this woman um and she said you know thank you miss tyler i felt you know like fat and uncomfortable with my body almost my entire life and now i at the age of 76 i feel human and i was just like how did a 76 year old even find this app you know like you know because totally. like i was like you know such an early adopter but that was amazing and then ever since then it's just like people from just like all over like you know, like I'm petite and I never see people like me. I'm super tall and I have always struggled. I'm the, I was always the curvy girl, you know, like all these people that have just like not been represented. And then, you know, increasingly, you know, and, and obviously like mid-size plus size. I mean, it's just crazy. Like, you know, that I think at the moment um, in the US, 70% of women are cons considered plus size. Yeah. And then there's like 20% of apparel that's made for plus size. So it's just like this, these majorities that aren't being served by fashion. But the other like really big one that's been coming through is like women that are like, you know, I'm just turning 60, you know, and like, you know, like it's so nice to see other women because like I want to be fashionable and I think of myself as fashionable and I still think I have value and I still think I have beauty. And then all of a sudden we've got like people on there that are 70 and showing like, like they look amazing. So yeah. one, one thing that sort of surprised me, I think has been, it was always designed so you could find people like you so you could like have better fit confidence that, you know, they've already done the job of trying things on and finding what fits. But what people have actually loved in addition to that is honestly just the diversity. So going through and being like, she's 70, she's rocking it. She's four foot eight and she looks phenomenal. She's size 20. She looks amazing. Like, look how good that jacket looks. And like, that has honestly been like what people are like really responding to. So it's like, it's, I love being able to see people like me, but I love just like the inclusiveness and the diversity and I mean, I didn't really think of it as being a community at the time, but like all the feedback has the word community and supportive and, you know, like welcoming. And I don't know how, but just like all the women that have come to Miss Tyler are just like, you know, really like good people and good vibes. And like, right. we, we haven't had to worry about, like, I mean, we, every 
we only introduced comments like I don't know at the end of last year um and we still like look at them like we don't Mm -hmm. we don't moderate them we kind of look at them on a daily basis and people anyone can report but we really haven't had to do much like you know with moderation because it's just been like a really nice community Well, that's such a testament too, because I think that when we as women are kind of looking for an outlet or looking for a resource and some sort of support, we're all kind of in the same boat, right? We're all kind of looking (laughs) to get to a solution together. So I think that there really shouldn't be anything other than supportive comments and positive comments. And I love that you're creating such a safe space for women to find you know, body confidence and diversity amongst different body shapes and sizes. And I'm curious too, what have you noticed because you have contributors and um, accounts on there from all over the world. This is not just in, you're in Australia, it's here in America, uh, it's all over the world. What are you seeing as far as um, either very stark similarities or stark differences country to country I mean honestly I haven't really looked too much at country by country I mean like one of the big differences is obviously we're heading into winter in Australia (laughs) you guys are heading into summer like you know like soon so like that's funny because like people are talking about like we did like a um oh yeah so we've just like launched you you probably know we just launched that feature daily inspo yes um you know, and I'll, I'll get back to your question, but like the whole idea was like, first of all, that insight that it's not just about finding people like you, which sort of the, the app was like designed to be sort of like hyper personalized, mm-hmm. um, but people like love seeing this diversity. And we also wanted more ways to find more creators. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other sort of insight we had was that, you know, I came across this like survey because I mean, I struggle to get dressed in the morning. I'm like, what should I wear? And then I default to the same things over right. and over. Right. And like, you always hear that people are wearing like, 20% of their wardrobe 80% of the time and like as you say like you know it's too easy to go back to the yoga gear you yeah, know yeah Does it's that very yeah. easy <laughs> <laughs> exactly and so like for me like you know like I think at the beginning I was like it was it kind of worked to be like I'm Sarah the founder of Miss Tyler a fashion company and I'm not fashionable but then it's kind of like I've got to start putting in a bit more effort now because otherwise sure. it looks like that's not working so yeah, the jig is up <laughs> yeah. So all of a sudden I'm like, I better start putting a bit more effort in. And like, honestly, when I put the effort in and I try and wear things from my wardrobe that I haven't worn for a while, I always end up going like, that's actually cool. Like I do, like I've got more things in my wardrobe than I realized. And so we, we launched Daily Inspo last week. And the whole idea is that we pick a theme or like a prompt for the day. And every day we sort of say like, today it's floral. And then we, you pop open the app on a daily basis and you can flick through and we just like, we show you a bunch of our different creators of all different heights and sizes and shapes uh, shapes and ages and ethnicities all wearing that prompt. So you can see how like so many different women are styling it. And then it's kind of like, okay, over to you, give it a go. Like, do you have something floral in your wardrobe? Why don't you try wearing it today? And I mean, this is just the beginning and we're going to like, like flesh it out. But even in that, you know, it's, um, yeah, actually I I forgot my story. Oh, but when we were doing floral, like somebody was going, oh, you know, great timing going into spring. And I was like, hadn't even thought about that because we are, you know, right. We're we're heading into winter. Yeah. So so like, that's definitely funny. I mean, but other than that, I mean, so we have users in over a hundred countries and our creators are from over, I think it's 83 countries, but our biggest markets are like the US, the UK Mm -hmm. and Australia, and then like Canada, New Zealand and South Africa. You know, so so I guess like culturally, like they're they're more similar. And we've we've targeted mm-hmm. those because obviously like English speaking, uh, our company isn't actually GDPR compliant, so we can't target Europe at the moment. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so so but but I mean like that's the power of like these platforms like Facebook and Instagram, like they are global. So if you have an idea, it can immediately tomorrow be available to people around the world, right. which is so cool. Well, and I'm curious too because you know, you're saying Australia, UK, US, um, you kind of have the data available. Do you see a kind of, uh, what's the word, like a median size or some sort of like what size really is the typical woman in the world? Because, you know, you to your point about 70% of women in America are plus size why is it, and you use the word the majority versus yeah. the minority, why is it that fashion isn't being geared towards the majority now? So I'm just well, curious, I have mean, you seen, like, is there a median size that you guys are kind of recognizing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so for us, like, you know, I think 
I mean, I haven't looked at this recently, but we actually yeah. now have 160,000 body profiles. So between, wow. so before we launched the app with the celebrity, we did a very basic like web one. So it was just like a website. Mm-hmm. And so we have 160,000 profiles. So it's a significant amount of data. Yeah. Um, just recently I looked, you know, cause I was, I'm basically uh, pitching to investors at the moment. Mm-hmm. So all of my brain is just like, what do investors want to see? And then sure. I'm just like, everything else is out the window, sure. but like plus size. And also just like, you know, um, women over 50, for instance, like mm-hmm. two such big markets, but of um, plus size women, like 43% of our creators are actually plus size and 33% of our users are plus size. So, you know, the stats is 70%. So I think that'll change as we go along. Um, but yeah, it, it is very interesting. And we are looking at like sort of like starting to like serve out some of this data to people because we have people, I think from, you know, size double zero to size 32 on the app. And even for me, like, you know, I'm an A cup. I've always had no boobs and, you know, like, which I've always hated, but, you know, but also, you know, I see enough, you know, models and whatever without having boobs that, you know, makes you feel okay about it. But then, you know, like, I, like I'm looking at this data and I'm like, there are more women with an F cup or larger than an A cup, you know, but then when we think about the world, we think about like this and actually one of the things, cause again, like pitching to investors, you're pitching about women's bodies and how complex they are and how, how much, you know, what we wear affects how we feel and like this emotion. And then I'm pitching to men who, you know, it's hard for them to get it. Yeah. What an interesting, I want you to get into that a little bit more too, because how interesting is that to be pitching a, mm. a app about women's fashion yeah. that really is more about women's confidence and women's yes. body confidence. Yeah. What is that like walking into a room? What's the feedback? What's the, how receptive are they? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely getting easier now yeah. because now yeah. I have data. So before I was kind of like, you know, like, you know, it, it affects people, you know, like there's this, like just so much crap in the world. Like, you know, there's, you know, like all these stats, like 88% of women compare themselves against what they see in social media. And most of the time it's unfavorable. Mm-hmm. You've got like, you've got like just so much stats, but so now we can sort of say like, well, actually 160,000 women have come to us because they want a fashion experience designed for them. 58% of women that, that um, use our app that have responded have said that they're more body confident having gone through the process. I also know that like literally every day, almost somebody will proactively reach out to me and say thank you for creating this like which is just incredible it's amazing Um, amazing. so so there it's it's not just me saying it it's Mm -hmm. other people saying it you know and so that sort of speaks louder but one thing that I've done this time is the first slide on my deck is because because again sort of another thing in the fashion industry is just like high return rates so now like like almost 50% of clothes are returned because they don't I'm fit so right. I'm guilty of that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but no, but I mean, but it's totally fine. It's like we all do it yeah, because like yeah. one, I mean, you know, you have to offer free returns now to have mm-hmm. permission to play mm-hmm. because otherwise people aren't going to take the risk. And now it's become, and you know, we, it was COVID. Like, you know, you couldn't go into stores and try on stuff. You had right. to shop online. Right. And then shopping on, you know, the change rooms, they're never very flattering, like the lighting, like, you know, and then even if you try it on, you don't know what you have at home to try it on with. Like there's all, there's all that sort of stuff. I, so- I told my friend the other day, I feel like that there is such a, uh, a missing occupation for dressing room designers where they could just yeah. design the most flattering lighting, the dressing room, whatever it is. I mean, think about how much <laughs> sales would go no, up. Actually, you, know what? you know what? Like one of our investors is a company, a, a property company in Australia called Mervac and they own 14 shopping centers, kind of like Westfields. Oh yeah. And um, like malls. And we've started doing some partnerships with them, but like, I'm constantly like one of the, their reasons in investing is like, you know, like as we get insights, we can bring it back to them. And one of the things I'm like saying, I was like, uh, sorry, we can't, I kind of rambling, but like, okay. I'm like, there is such an opportunity to serve, you know, plus size women because a lot of brands and I sort of wasn't aware of this before, but like a lot of women that we speak to are like my expectation when I go into the shops is that there's one store that I can go into mm. out of all these stores, because even stores that carry like my sizing often don't carry them in store. Right. And so then you have the experience of going into the store and then the person's like, sorry, we can't help you. And everyone just feels awkward. And then it's like, why would I ever do that again? 
But it's that feeling like in Mean Girls when she's like, yeah. you can try Sears, right? Oh, it's <laughs> when awful. she wants the next size up. It's oh, awful. Oh. But then yeah. all, all of a sudden, like, but then I'm not going to go shop there anymore. But then I have, but then the retail is like, well, nobody's coming in to buy. And so then it's just like self fulfilling mm. prophecy. So what I would love them to do is like kind of like go, let's have like, you know, one, when we've gone into these, um, what we've done with uh, their shopping centers is we've had like these stylists and residence programs where we go in for like a month. And I bring in a bunch of our creators of different sizes and shapes that a lot of them are stylists, but sometimes they're just like, you know, but fashionable women Mm -hmm. and they come in and they, they basically work from this space as a co-working space. So for them, it's kind of like, if they work from home, normally it's like fun to go into a different space and then have peers. And then in exchange for having this space, they give two 30 minute free shopping, like style consults to shoppers. So fun. And it's been so great, but like, I'm like, you know, having like some women that are like, plus size that a stylist there is one makes women feel much more comfortable coming in. Then they can go out to the stores, find all the stuff, work with the retailers, say we're going to bring in women, like bring in your stock, but then put it into like a space, like a curve collection where women can come to here versus going into the stores. And then they can discover the brands, feel more comfortable. And then we can get them back in there. So Almost anyway, like a pop up, like yeah, like a like pop, a pop up, up per size. Or kind something. of like a yeah, exactly. But it's like just different, and it could be a game, you know, for like different different women, you know, that it just makes it easier. Like this is designed for you. I love this. But but as part of that, we should create a really flattering, easy change room. <laughs> like that could be the thing. Like it's yeah. the most flattering. Yeah, dressing like, room. Because it's like, not, like however many stores are in there, you can't have like fifty retail stores all create the most flattering change room. Right. But you could create one or like you know, but like, like that's what it should in, be. It should yeah. be your vestibule that like travels. Yeah. And then yeah. different stores can part. We'll, we'll work on the details. But I'm, just a, I'm just an ideation machine over here. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. No, but, um, I just, I think that there's, because it's true when you go into a yeah. dressing room that has good lighting or something, you're like, oh, oh, okay, this is better. Well, and even that, even that you can step back further. Because like when you're yeah. standing this close to the mirror, you can't even see like full length. And it's just like... <laughs> yeah I know. oh my goodness and then you get stuck in the thing in the garment oh that you're wearing you can't get out of it <laughs> I've had that happen too many times yeah actually that I mean anyway I'll get back to the, the thing I've got too many stories but no um, I love it so in the investment deck so yes yeah. so returns are a huge issue that yeah. investors are aware of because it's co- the cost of returns is approaching a trillion dollars a year and so that's obviously not good for the industry because like they're losing a lot of money from it it's not good for the environment but honestly, it's not good for us as well. I mean, like as much as it's convenient to do that, wouldn't you prefer that everything you buy just be perfect and you got to keep it and you didn't so have to So is that because like- they, when, and this is just me being naive, when you return a garment, they can't resell it. Is that right? So yeah. So there's, there's first of all, there's like just like extra shipping, handling, sure. packaging, but then a third of what gets sent back can't be resold at full price. So some of that goes to landfill, some of that gets destroyed and some of that goes to like discount outlets. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Wow. So anyway, so, in, so kind of investors kind of like know that. And so then I've got this new, this new page and it's basically like, you know, all the catwalk models, like, you know, and then like influencers, you know, like, you know, the, the typical kind of like influencer, mm-hmm. you know, like, like all over the page. And I was like, you know, fashion is a $3 trillion industry that doesn't fit by design. And the whole concept is, is it's designed to be exclusive yes. and like inaccessibly aspirational. And it's never supposed to be something that we all have. It's something that we all aspire to, but we would never quite reach. And so then you, I was like looking at the data and it's like to be a fashion like catwalk model, you have to be five foot nine and 0.2% of women are five foot nine. And then it's like, you've got to be all these different things. So it's like, you know, that's just like, height wise, never mean. Yes, never mind, exactly. Like, height wise. And then if you think about it, and then like, <sighs> even if you are that 0.005, that's, you know, like size zero, like this, like the perfect bone structure, everything right. else. Right. You also have to be the right age. And like, you know, five years later, they're not relevant anymore either. You know, that's so true. So it's, it's just like this crazy thing. And then I was like looking at it and it was like, um, plus size models so to be plus size model you need to be a size 12 but size 12 isn't even plus size right you know you know and it's like to be a petite model you have to be five foot seven or below but five foot seven is like three inches taller than the average height that's five inches taller than me (laughs) yeah so so actually back to your point so like just like um the average height like the average size in the u.s is a size 14 wow okay and and the average height is five foot four 
and the average bra cup, which is, is crazy because what, so then what you just said is that, so the average height is, or sorry, the average size is a 14, but to be yep. a plus size model, you need to be a size 12. Yeah. So <laughs> this is crazy. This yeah, is crazy. And exactly, this is why exactly. it's, it's so, so it's like, phenomenal that you're finding yeah. ways for like women to share peer to peer exactly. and not just by the fashion industry standards. Cause you think about it and it's like, fashion is like just high friction. Like it's a big industry and it's like lots of pain points along the way. And the reason for me is that we're being shown and being sold clothes that don't fit us. And so no wonder we feel crappy. Cause like, even, you know, you buy the stuff and you're like, Oh, it doesn't quite fit right. Some of it are turn, some of it keep, but I don't really like, love it, you know? And then I go to find inspiration, but I can't see inspiration on somebody that looks like me. So it doesn't really help me. And then, you know, yeah. And I mean, again, for like daily inspiration, like the other sort of like insight for, for starting it was there's always stats like, um, like 62% of women have had like irrational tantrums, like wardrobe braid, trying to get ready. I, mean, I know because like we, I, I, like obviously the stats are much higher. <laughs> you know, we've all had this. And then it's like 21% of women have had arguments with their partner over getting dressed. And again, clearly much higher. And then it's like, what do you mean it looks fine? <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, if you're going to tell me it doesn't look good, you better have a better alternative. Right. Yeah. What's the no, solution? I say no four letter words. <laughs> No four exactly. letter words. I ask you how I look. Exactly. Sure, fine, good. Nope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful as usual. <laughs> yeah. I like um, that. But, but yeah, so, you know, getting dressed every single day, like, you know, gets us caught up. We get stuck. Yeah. Going to social media and magazines makes us feel crappy. Then we buy the clothes that we think are going to fit and they don't fit either. So, yeah. It's so true. And, and I'm seeing such a rise and sure, maybe this is just because of my social media algorithm, but I'm seeing so many more creators now. And of course I'm following, you know, the midsize fashion hashtag, midsize blogger, that kind of yeah, stuff. So I am yeah. being fed now that I know to look for these things, yeah. bodies that look like mine. And yeah. I'm finding so much more inspiration through that. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to kind of be a creator and a contributor for you, uh, sharing these kind of th styles that I'm finding that work for me as well. I'm curious to know what companies have you seen or what fashion designers or brands are you seeing that are doing a good job of making this shift? I know here, you know, in the U.S., I've been seeing a big shift, even in Victoria's Secret with yeah. their models. Yeah. Uh, Target is doing a great job, not Photoshopping. I see stretch marks and I see cellulite on those bikini yeah. ads in the store, uh, Express, but I'm curious kind of oh, what- well, when, you... when I was over there, I yeah, mean- what um, do you I mean, I honestly, like, I was just seeing Old Navy everywhere and Old Navy did like such a beautiful campaign. Um, mm. And it was like, it was everywhere. And I can't remember what, what it was called, but I think Old Navy is doing a great job. There's also, I mean, there, there's a lot of like now, because obviously like, you know, serving women that are like the majority of the population is an opportunity right. and people are starting to realize that. But then, I mean, we just did a we just did a fashion show in New York, sorry, a photo shoot in New York. And we brought in like um, eight of our creators to come together. And we chose women that were kind of like represented our community. So we had, you know, women, like we had Steph, who's like this gorgeous, like five foot tall, like creator in Detroit. Um, Annie couldn't make it, but Annie is actually one of our like beautiful, she's a trans woman. Um, she's oh. 61, so no, cool. she's 65, I think. Um, and she's only recently like a trans woman. So this is kind of like this new thing for her. Um, but she's like loved being part of our community and all the support. And like, we love her, but she's like six foot one. So she's tall, you yeah. know? And then we had, um, you know, a couple of ladies that are like size 20 and like the most fabulous, like you need to follow them. Um, you know, so we just had like just a range of like women. Um, but it was honestly hard to find like labels to bring in that covered right. the whole gamut of sizing. And so one that we've worked with a couple of times that we like love is actually it's, it's active wear. And I know that, you know, like it's the time to get out of that, but if you need more act, active wear, it's an Australian label called active truth and their stuff is like beautiful. And it's every, every, every person has like loved it, but like, that's honestly a big opportunity because it's again, it's like, you don't want to have to wear, like, we didn't want to be like, okay, you four women, you're going to wear these, this brand, and then you're going to wear this brand. Right. Like, obviously like there's amazing brands out there that are great, but like, it, it's just like fun for everyone to wear the same stuff as well you know so like I think you know it'd be nice for like more brands to do that I'm, I'm more probably actually we did a fashion show in in um, Sydney as part of this like um, stylist in residence 
and going around the brands there. But like Hugo Boss does like really beautiful stuff, like up to, oh, nice. you know, like um, in Australia, it's a size 18 um, to 20, uh, which is a bit different. I think it's like a, a 14 to 16. Okay. But um, and then who did we have? Tommy Hilfiger, I think. There were, there were actually some brands that were surprising to me that were sort of like doing a great job of it. And then like Australian brands you probably wouldn't have heard of, like Chic and um, Ginger and Smart. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, I think, I think that's the thing as well like about Miss Tyler. It's not designed for women that are of any height, size, shape. It's not designed for a group. It's right. literally designed for everybody and everybody first of all, can enjoy the diversity, but they can also then enjoy like a personalized experience. So, and if you look like a Victoria's Secret model, like that is amazing. And you probably still also want to get inspiration that's relevant to you. And so you can come on here and find people that are five foot nine and size size zero and get inspired by them. We like, you know, we don't, we're not prejudicing anyone. We just want everybody to to kind of have that same experience of being able to like find women. And again, the great thing is that, I mean, we're very much like, it's not about retouching photos and like showing the perfect like Instagram pose. It's all about just like women sharing. And at the beginning, like most of our creators were people that, you know, are already like influencers, like, you know, you know, like a lot of them like micro and nano influencers, they might have like, you know, 10,000 or 5,000 followers mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, you know, but they're comfortable sharing and creating content or stylists that were using mm-hmm. it as a way to like, it's great for them to be able to like, you know, build their profile and like do what right. they love and, and reach a wider audience. But then now that we've been around, you know, creators have been on the platform since February last year. So over a year, now we've got users that have been like, I've been on the platform for 10 months and I never would have thought about myself as, you know, doing this, but like in this forum, like I feel comfortable doing it. Like, you know, cause it's just like such nice women. And I want to share what, what makes me feel good about myself as well. You know, yeah. I'm not a fashionista, but this app like made me feel great. And I found these pants and they're super awesome. So that's yeah, really cool. I think there's so much uh, versatility to the app that maybe is kind of untapped at this point and yeah. it's exciting because it can only grow. And in my intro, I talked a little bit about the ways that I use the app personally and, sh- you know, went through and showed everyone, yeah. but I want to kind of, can you give us a little, as we wrap up, maybe some features that are kind of on the way or things that we can be looking forward to yeah. from the trailer? So, so we have, um, so the way that we help you find creators now is like our fit algorithm, which considers like height and shape and size, like cup size, a bit of coloring, but for different people, like different things are important. So for instance, if you're looking for pants, maybe you only care about height, you know, or maybe you're buying a blouse, you only care about cup size. So first of all, we're going to increase discover. So you can find different women in different ways that are like, these are matched on your, your body algorithm, but these are matched on height. These are matched on size these are the people that are in your like local area because a lot of people are like oh that's cool I want to see other people in like you know the US or in Detroit um so that so we're doing that which I think will be really fun another like really big one um which is super exciting is that we are going to be moving into hair and beauty by the end of the year hopefully because like those are again two categories where it's like physical attributes right are relevant you know <laughs> and but again it's great because it's like often like you know our creators who are doing fashion also do hair and beauty so it's like yeah. you can now post three types of content and then you might match with certain people for body but you match with like a bunch of other people with hair and a bunch of other people with face so like that's really cool and then um one thing that you know on daily inspo will be moving daily inspo into something where you can see it and then you can say view all and it actually takes you to your feed but it, it filters all of your feed by that that thing so you're seeing everybody by that and then that sort of starts to move us into filtering so then you can start to filter and be like well actually I'm looking for a cocktail dress for cold weather and then boom there are three dresses that will fit me so once we get there that'll become like really helpful to be like oh I need to get ready for a brunch brunch people I follow people I don't follow yet so so like a lot more like because we I mean again like you know as a startup you start and you have like there's four outfits posted on the site. There's right. no point filtering. <laughs> but now we have 18,000 outfits on the site. So now it's like we've got so much content. So now it's just helping people, you know, get in there and find it. And actually, are you playing Wordle? I'm not. I, everyone else <laughs> is, but I'm not. So at the end of Wordle, you get like a little like um, scorecard. And it basically okay. says like how many games you've played, how many like in a row did you get successful? So like okay. your streak. 
and then you can share that and like every day like I send it to my mum and then she does it you know back but um we want to do something like that where it's kind of like did you try like the daily inspo today and you know try and get people to like mix things up and enjoy their wardrobe and be like you've done a seven day street like keep it going just like keep you know wearing stuff and then they can share that with friends and get people involved because I think it just becomes like a fun thing that you know if everyone every day people are coming to Miss Tyler and going you know what I'm gonna find something new in my wardrobe and just like shake things up and actually this morning I had an idea which I need to write down which is like after saying did you do the daily inspo of like metallic Mm -hmm. yes or no how did it make you feel Mm -hmm. and then if it makes them feel good we can just like take that as a reminder and next time they're looking for something to wear we can be like prompts that made you feel good in the past and you can go back and be like oh floral what did I wear that day that's right I love that almost like you could almost do like a little like sliding bar where it's you know this many outfits made me feel great yeah yeah I could yeah because I think it's a good reminder to be like that's right like you know I felt great when I wore that yeah Oh, so much fun. Sarah, I'm so thrilled, not only that we've been able to connect, but that you've created such a beautiful app and are connecting so many other women and spreading such a positive message. I can't wait to see what's going to come next. And please, the next time you're in the States and in LA, I know you were recently like right now. Oh, I'm I'm going to be back actually, because I'm coming. So I'm pitching to investors right now. So I'm doing two weeks in Australia and then I come to LA for a week. So I will, I'll message you. Let me, let me know. Yes. I would love to meet up and we can do something fun. Awesome. Bye. All right. We'll chat soon. Thank you.